Hey everyone, this is Chris. I guess the three day weekend worked because I'm feeling super motivated to make a couple of videos today. Uh, I'm not sure when I'm going to upload them all, but this is going to be the first of them, which hopefully you will see tonight when I upload it. Uh, depends a little bit on processing and internet speeds and all that other fun stuff, but I won't make you wait too long. Of course, if you're listening to this, you've already done the waiting part. You just didn't know it. Uh, anyways, the Grey Wanderer is out. and I can finally make an actual deck with this wonderful card right here. A solo hero deck. Uh, and as promised, and because this is me, uh, we're going to play Solo Theodrid today. I will warn you that I will probably make a few more gameplay mistakes today than I normally might. Uh, there's a lot of nuance to playing with the Grey Wanderer that I am still a little bit getting used to. Uh, the resource smoothing effect only works for non-unique cards, and only the first non-unique card that you play during the planning phase, which quite frankly has bitten me more times while testing this deck than I would like. Usually not in a way that invalidates the game, but just in a way that makes me feel bad for forgetting. Anyways, game plan today is we are going to ramp like crazy. Uh, starting an 8th threat makes it super easy to use secrecy cards in order to get out expensive allies early. Starting with a whopping 4 resources per round, puts us well on our way to being able to afford some of the most expensive allies in the game without even breaking a sweat. And we add on additional resource generating on top of all of that. Everything just gets a little more ridiculous. Uh, so that's where we're at from the start. And I am currently going up against Foundations of Stone, mostly because it is a really cool quest that I like a lot, but there's a couple things actually that make it a little difficult for this deck in particular. Final stage, spoiler alert, uh, you can only quest with as many allies as you quest with heroes. So in a solo hero deck, it means you're a little bit limited. You might lose when we get there. Uh, the nameless things, you can see one sitting up here ready to go once they get shuffled into the encounter set. Uh, they discard cards from the top of your deck and get stronger based on the resource cost. As this is a very expensive deck, it could backfire, but hopefully by the time we get to them, everything is in a good place. With that being said, flip over to side 1B, reveal my one card from the encounter deck. Zigil Mineshaft is probably the tamest option. Uh, and we'll go from there. Draw my card for the first turn. Well, okay. First thing I'm going to do is activate Grey Wanderer, take my threat up to nine, uh, and I'm just going to generate two additional resources. Use two of them straight away to play Steward of Gondor. You all knew that was coming. And if you didn't, you haven't been watching me play Secrecy decks for long enough. Uh, I have two Resourcefuls, which I'm going to slide here under Strider. Uh, the Theodred attachment management gets a little absurd. And with one left, I'm going to play Timely Aid. Look at the top five cards of my deck. One, five. And we're going to hope for a big ally. Well, I guess I'm taking Gandalf. Um, Warden of Healing is a great choice, but I don't think Warden of Healing is a very effective ally to start with, just because I need a little more willpower on the board in order to potentially make it past locations like this Zigil Mineshaft. Especially if we get Branching Paths, especially if we get Burning Low. A lot of ways that it could go bad to be sitting at four willpower right off the bat. Uh, and at this point, with three cards in my hand and a resource generation of eight per round already, uh, I'm going to have Gandalf draw me three cards. 
Yep, we're, we're gonna be doing good. All right, so let's move on to questing. Currently five thread in the staging area. I can pretty trivially send eight. And I cannot send any more, but I might be able to get rid of the draft. By which I mean I will, I just have to decide if I need. So, card for the round is Lightless Passage, which would be nine on nine. I'm actually pretty okay with that, given the cards that are in my hand. I'll make no progress. Travel to Zigil Mineshaft. Have combat or anything else. So, let's just refresh and move on. Uh, Phaedra should have given himself a resource during the quest phase. I forgot. Now we're going to get a total of three more from those. During resource, draw a card. That's a good one. And I'm tap two attachments, pick up my threat to 11, generate four more. Um, at this point, I'm going to play Good Harvest, naming lore. This deck only currently has lore and leadership in it, but unfortunately, Uriel is a unique ally. So if I want to get her online as soon as possible, I need to have some way of fixing those spheres. Uh, and I've already played one. See what I mean about screwing up the sequencing? Uh, we're going to say I played this Welling Hall Preserver first, then Good Harvest. Actually, I guess it doesn't matter because Good Harvest fixes the lower resources regardless. But you see how easy it is to get yourself caught in a trap of, oh, I played Deep Knowledge or I played something dumb and now I'm stuck. Anyways, that's enough planning for me because I have run out of eight resources. Uh, so let's move on to the quest phase. Unfortunately, and I, I really should have thought of this a little bit more ahead of time, but uh, there's four in the staging area. I'm sending four. Nope, sorry, I'm sending six because of the Strider boost. Uh, so we're going to hope for something nice and small here. And Furial lets me discard it if I don't want to deal with it. Ooh, Goblin Scout. That would be at seven. I'd have to raise my threat by one. Could deal with it. Not too bad. Yeah, all right. So we're going to accept that Goblin Scout. Brings the threat up to seven. Fail questing by one. Raise my threat to 12. I guess also at this point, I don't want to exhaust the Cave Torch because I can't deal with another enemy of any sort. I'm already going to take an undefended attack for this one. Basically have all the secrecy stuff I need. So let's, let's punt on that for a little bit. I do have to engage the Goblin Scout. Gets a Shadow card. Take this undefended. Add Goblin Swordsman to the staging area. Well, okay. Vader's gonna take one, which I'll heal off with Grey Wanderer. Uh, and he's gonna attack to get rid of this Goblin. And that is gonna be it for this round. So ticking up to 13. Ents would heal, but I don't have any others. Clear off my trackers. All right, drawing a card, generating. Once again, Phaedra should have had one resource, and with three passive generation and four active generation, we end up at eight. Grey Wanderer allows me to clear three damage off of Phaedra, as well as generating those resources at a cost of just one threat. Okay, at this point, first non-unique that I'm gonna play not require a resource match. Yes, doesn't require a resource match is different from some of the other things. Anyways, deep knowledge. Doomed 2 draws me two cards. 
well. Well, well, well. Um, so I'm going to spend all eight, put in a Farmir, and a Knight of the White Tower. This, I think, is how I'm going to deal with that Goblin. Well, I need three attacks, so that's kind of annoying. Oh well. Uh, we still have five characters, so Strider's Willpower Boost is in effect. So let's quest. Three, six, nine. Up against currently five in the staging area. Still refuse, and I can still use Farm. Get a goblin follower. No, thank you. Watchful eyes. All right, well, I'm going to have to leave that hiding behind my beautiful face over here. Uh, it's probably not going to do anything bad for us because normally Phaedrid is going to be ready at the end of combat. Just how it goes. Uh, yep, so I sent 9 up against 5 is going to be 4 progress. Pay 1 threat to clear that out, but honestly, I don't, I don't think I need to. Uh, so I'm just going to engage this swordsman. End with Knight of the White Tower. Oof. All right, well, there's the sudden pitfall that uh, I always forget about. Um, yeah, and at this point now, because of that, I think I have to use Theodrid to kill this Goblin Swordsman, just so I'm not sitting on another enemy. Uh, this is going to cause Watchful Eyes to trigger, revealing a foul well. I will discard a card at random from my hand. Not bad. Oop. Well, oh, there's Knight of the White Tower number two. All right, well, that goblin next to a ledge has apparently taken care of two of the best allies in the deck. Still fine. Take up to 17 threat during the refresh phase. Not really a lot of other secrecy cards that I will draw, so it's no big deal to be pushing up quite so high. Uh, Vader should have the resource on him again. But we're going to do all the same stuff as before to get me to eight. Drawing a card for the round. All right. First non-unique is going to be Deep Knowledge yet again. Now my hand is full of lore cards. And unfortunately, now I can't play Ithilian Lookout for his secrecy cost. Uh, so instead, I'm going to use Timely Aid. Gandalf would be great here. Well, there's a Treebeard, also pretty great. Uh, the one that I have in my hand is now a little bit useless, but that's okay. Uh, what I really would like to draw very soon is a Rod of the Steward. It's basically the only thing that lets me take all these extra resources and turn them into cards for progress. Next four resources, play a Ranger of Cardalon. Uh, and I need to quest pretty hard this round since I know there's no enemies. I am above the Strider threshold, unfortunately. So we're going to send one, four, seven, eight, nine. Uh, leave Farmer just in case, but we're probably going to use it. Up against seven. I've got nine. Branching Paths is going to add four threat right now. Pretty tame though. Well, so let's see, I can add one, two, three, four myself, so we'd still make two progress. All right, so we're gonna take branching paths. Take spread up to 11. Exhaust Faramir boosts me up to 13. 
I don't want to pay threat right now to get more progress on Zigil Mineshaft, so we're just going to take it. Clear out the Mineshaft, get one progress on the main quest. I'm going to travel to Branching Paths. Uh, I don't want to exhaust Cave Torch. Branching Paths in the staging area is a little worse than Fouled Well. Yeah, pretty much that. Uh, Vader should have given himself a resource again. I don't know what I'm going to do with 11 resources on Theodred next round, but uh, I'm sure we'll think of something. Yeah, I could Cave Torch, but I, I don't think it's worth it since I'm not incredibly well set up for combat right now. We are in a pretty good spot for... Uh, Dealing with these locations. So, three resources from Theodred's natural generation, four more from the two attachments. Rock hard. Well, free all doesn't help. Uh, and Treebeard gets one. Could have run out of resource dice pretty quick. Might as well spend three for an affiliate lookout, which allows me to look at the top card. It is Goblin Follower. See, that's good to know. Because it means there will be. Well, I mean, mostly what it means is that I can Cave Torch right now. Get it in the staging area and not have to deal with it. <sighs> mm. But I could also discard it and then discard another card later. Yeah, let's just not worry about fighting so much right now. So we'll get rid of Goblin Follower with that ability and we'll go from here. The uh, rest of my hand does nothing. So <laughs> let's quest. Uh, three, six, seven, eight, nine. Leave these two for fighting, I think is fair. Nine up against seven. And this could be bad. It'll probably be all right. Since I can discard this, I will take that. Uh, all right, Zigil Mineshaft is gonna be plus five, but I'm just going to raise my threat to 27, so I don't have to deal with it. Uh, I am above the threshold for nameless things, but I don't care that much. Uh, and this would be two progress. I'll make it three, four, five, six. Boosting my old power up there. Branching paths is clear. Four on the main quest. Uh, and with branching paths, I need to decide to reveal one of these. Uh, it is revealed, right? Yep. Okay. I'm not going to pick a Surge Treachery because I don't get to decide. I'm going to take Dark and Dreadful. Uh, one damage to all the exhausted characters is not that big of a deal. As soon as I draw a Warden of Healing, we're not at a dark location, so that's all well and good. Uh, the Ent is also going to heal itself. That is where we are. We'll travel to Foul Dwell. Doesn't have a travel cost. Life is pretty good there. I think we're moving on. I think I forgot another Theodred resource, but while I'm sitting at eight on him, I'm not so sure. Draw a card for the round. There we go. We're going to add seven again. Need to get more resource dice. Uh, and Treebeard ticks up to two. Everything else is good. Perfect. Card I drew is Rod of the Steward. So I'm going to spend two resources to draw a card. 
Well, that resourceful is cool, but probably not great. So I'm going to spend four resources to draw two cards. Uh, only because that's a nice, easy chunk. this point, I haven't played any non-unique cards yet. So I'm going to spend three for another Ithilian Lookout. It allows me to look at the top card. It's a Branching Pad. Branching Pads is fine. It's only three threat right now. Nice and easy. Take four for another Ranger of Cardalon. Long haul preserver should have healed itself. I have resourceful in my hand, which I can always play, but it's super useless right now. I think I'm gonna spend these two to draw another card just to make the bookkeeping a little easier. All right, all the cards in my hand are dead right now. That's okay. Let's quest. Seven. Uh, we'll go all the way up to 11 with two Rangers of Cardalon. Currently up against four, which I know because I scribed. I'm going to take up to seven. I will use Faramir to make it uh, to add one, two, three, four, five willpower for me. That makes nine progress, five on the Foul of Well, four on the main quest. So we are one away from advancing. A pretty good place to be. Travel to branching paths. Yeah. Basically it. Pick up to a whopping 30 threat. Good thing there's no hill trolls in this scenario. Although, honestly, at this point, I would be fine. Maybe I forgot to give himself a resource again. All right, so draw my card. All the resources generate to bring us up to a total of eight. And three for a second dwelling hall preserver. And two to draw a card. Uh, this is worth a good harvest. Good harvest naming lore. Play a Warden of Healing for two. I might might end up playing this resourceful regardless, just because I run out of other things to do. But there's, there's so much deck left. All right, let's quest once again. Up against four. I'm going to send one, four, seven. 11. And I can discard this card if I don't want it. Goblin Follower is completely fine. He comes down and engages with me. I make seven progress, so branching paths is clear. Quest advances. I believe quest advancement happens first, but if I'm wrong, that's because this is confusing and annoying, and I'm sorry. Uh, thankfully, that doesn't do anything special. So looking at the top three, here, I'll take Burning Low. Because that card kind of sucks and it doesn't do anything right now. Could travel to, I could remember to give Theodred his resource, which I suspect I have forgotten every round now until somewhere in the end. Um, do I want to travel to Lightness Passage? I need to get rid of it eventually. Treebeard should be at three resources. Definitely have two Treebeard swings just in case. I'm in pretty good shape, so yeah, let's do it. We'll travel to Lightless Passage, exhausting the Cave Torch, revealing Lightless Passage, which does nothing. So cool, nice and easy. Uh, I'll have Treebeard defend against this Goblin Follower. Three attack against three defense. Cave-in is nothing. I need six attack. I have five without Treebeard. So we'll spend with Treebeard. 
and use these to heal that goblin follower. Uh, Word of Healing cleans up two of this damage. That's all we got. There we go. Uh, okay. So resources, I take up to five here. Four with attachments. Threat goes up to 32. And I draw a card for uh, that is perfect. So first non-unique is going to be second Warden of Healing. Don't desperately need it, but it's nice to have them. Then to draw a card off the rod. Sneak attack is lovely, but not helpful. Spend two, draw another card. All right, well, there's the Gandalf. I'll spend two, draw another card. Maybe it should be at two. All right, moving to questing. I have one ten with those. Um, I don't really want to advance right away. I can afford to mill a couple cards. Nothing in the staging area. So, all right, 10 for me up against. I could skip that, but two damage to each of these characters is nothing. Two, two. Uh, the ants will each clear half of themselves and the wardens will clear the others. So 10 against nothing is 10 progress. Four on the Lightless Passage, six on the main quest. Don't have any enemies, so we're just gonna clear off all of this once those ready. So let's do that now. Since we're at refresh. Um, I think I forgot to give Theodorative Resource again, but I'll just leave it because I'm not sure. Draw my card, pick up as before to eight. Okay, now here's a card I've been looking for. Four for Aristor. Discard an extra Steward of Gondor to draw a card. Double sneak attack. So many cards left. Uh, yeah, all right. Oh, I should have milled two cards for forced quest stage, so I'll do that now. Probably doesn't make that much of a difference which two was. Although Aristor and a sneak attack were pretty nice. Just a goof. Oh uh, yeah, move to questing, play sneak attack, put in a Gandalf, choose to draw three cards. I think my threat needs to be one higher too from this. If I get even close to the end, I will laugh because normally it doesn't happen. And with two extra Gandalfs, no big deal. Uh, so yeah, let's quest 10, 14, up still against zero. And I can discard this card if I want. Well, that's probably going to kill a character, so I will skip Crumbling Ruin and reveal instead Goblin Swordsman. One whole threat. Uh, and this goblin is about to get washed away. Make 13 progress, which clears the water's edge. Forgot to mill two extra cards. Good Harvest, Deep Knowledge. That is enough to move on to stage three. And thus, four. Washed away. I'm going to cut all this out because it's quite annoying, but I'll be back in a minute once I have swapped the encounter decks around, reshuffled all the parts.
All right, we're reshuffled. I am ready to advance to a random stage four. Lost my cave torch, lost the goblin. Whole bunch of nameless things. And that sudden pitfall is now back in the encounter deck, ready to surprise me when I least expect it. Good news this time, actually, there's a bunch of sort of harmless goblins that got shuffled in. Might make things a little bit easier going in the final stages of the quest. Uh, but honestly, stage four is usually fun. You can't read that D4 on the camera, but it is a one. So we're going to go to the first stage four, and I'll put all the rest of them on the bottom. It is the Endless Caves. <laughs> when revealed, discard all resources from my heroes. What a tragedy. Uh, I need to make 17 progress, but otherwise, that's all. Feels pretty good. So let's refresh. Heal the Ranger of Cardolan before that happens. Draw my card for the round. Three resources here, plus four from attachments and contract. Uh, at this point, I will play the third Athelian Lookout just to see what's up here. Moria Bats. None of my ranged characters are out. Uh, so I'm going to discard that because I have no way of dealing with them. I mean, I do have Unit I Wonder in my hand, but it's too expensive. At this point, I will pay four for a replacement tonight of the tower. Move on to questing. So, uh, Watchful Eyes should be shuffled in here as well. So now I can use Phaedra to fight again. I knew that was going to happen, and then I forgot. All right, so. Questing once again. Here we have 10, 12, to make 17, 16. Maybe you're now at three resources. 16 against nothing. I also drop a card in my hand to get a replacement. I'll drop this tribute to draw another ent. Pretty good. So, we reveal Crumbling Ruin, uh, which Furial lets me say no to, so I absolutely will. Mithril Load, Doomed One, okay. I don't think I've ever seen this card before. I've played this quest so many times. Oh, okay. Sure. Um, I'm going to make 16 progress. And I'm going to leave it at 16 to give myself one more round. We'll travel to the Mithril Load. I'm not going to worry about it. I should have given himself a resource. Yep. Taking up to 38 in the refresh phase. I'll draw myself a card. Generate resources at 8 and 39 threat. There are six cards left in my deck. Uh, so I could just basically draw them all before I have to deal with any nameless thing. So I'm going to just card Extra Steward of Gondor to Aristor. I'm going to pay four to draw two cards. My first non-unique card to play third Welling Hall Preserver. That leaves me just enough to sneak in Gandalf and draw the last cards for quest. 
That's what we're gonna do. Go to questing. Pay one, sneak attack. Here's a Gandalf, draws me three. That's a, another sneak attack Gandalf in the bottom three, which is exciting. So I'm gonna send uh, six, seven, 10, 14, 18 to the quest. It's not in the staging area. Sage is going to give himself a resource before I forget. It's one of the final turns of the game, finally remembering. Counter card is Goblin Swordsman, uh, who I will keep. I think I might have screwed up the interaction with Furial's ability last round, but uh, honestly, I think it all probably worked out fine. Whatever we got would not have been too bad, as long as it was not those Moria bats. Anyways, up against one in the staging area. I'm going to make way too much progress. Clears out the mithril load. Finishes up the endless caves. Moving on to stage five. And now I have to quest like a madman. I do reveal one encounter card from the top of the deck. Doomed one and surge. Goblin Follower, I'm going to be engaged with me. Goblin Swordsman is also going to be engaged with me. Once we get to the engage step, nowhere to travel to, so we're just going to do all this now. Gandalf, of course, is back in my hand. I could sneak in another Gandalf, but I don't, this feels like the wrong time. Uh, so yeah. I have Knight of the White Tower defend against this Goblin Swordsman. Second Moria Bat's gone, no damage. I don't want to risk losing Treebeard, so I'm going to defend Goblin Follower with Aristor. If we don't get a Shadow Effect, he'll survive. If it's Crumbling Ruin or something dumb, I don't need his willpower or his card draw anymore. It's a nameless thing, so he stays alive. As irrelevant as that may be. Six here to kill the Goblin Follower. Treebeard is four to kill the Swordsman. Knocking stuff all over the place. Use the Wardens to heal. Tick up to 41. Resource phase puts me at eight once again. Cost of one threat, which I am sure you're thinking, maybe now is not the time to continue ticking up threat, but it's not going to make a difference. Really not. A four for a Ranger of Cardalon. A four for a Gimli. Gonna hang out with all the Rangers of Cardalon. I'll still get one for sneak attack Gandalf from questing. So let's quest. I'm gonna send four, six, using Faramir's ability to the quest. This, this is where it's get dicey and it might take me a couple turns to get through here. Uh, but I can choose whether or not I want to deal with that. Honestly, could, but I could also get better. So we're gonna skip that with Furial's ability and instead get Burning Low. Because Burning Low does nothing. And it means I get all six progress without having to try too hard. Moving on to refresh. 43. I don't get any more cards. Always take back up to eight resources. I'll say at this point I can barely even play these for all that it matters. We're just going to drop five on a regular Gandalf. Who is going to drop my threat? 
Just cuz. Uh, we're gonna quest for one, five, seven. We've gone way up in the world since last round. Can't discard this card, so I have to deal with the Drowned Treasury. Uh, but seven against two is exactly five, which is the number that we need. And all these other allies are, I guess, sitting around watching Theodred and Gandalf climb out of a cave. But that's all we got. Uh, this is Ramp in Lord of the Rings, the living card game. Start off with secrecy, play as many expensive allies as you want. Some mix and match potential available here if you want to go into more spheres. Uh, Jubair goes wonderfully with Fryal. You could skip Treebeard and the Ants for maybe a tactics package. Uh, the new Bears and the Bjorning Skin Changer are great. Classic Bayorn is always great and very good with sneak attack. Definitely some more doomed options that you can explore, uh, like the doomed sneak attack that shuffles back into your deck. I have the card sitting on my desk over there. I just don't remember what it's called. But yeah, uh, we generated entirely too many resources. And this is what happens. Thanks for watching.